Hey John, uh, once again I apologize sincerely about your, uh, your problems going on. I believe and I'm hoping they're gonna be uh, some easy fixes here. Uh, first things first, before we get into anything, I wanna make sure we get this belt tracking right. I know this is the one according to the video. Uh, I believe it is this one that's tracking and it's, it's just kind of sitting still. But what I believe is wrong is that it's, it's not tight enough. So what I want you to do is you're gonna come to this side of the machine. Uh, I know I explained it wrong on the, uh, on the phone call we had this morning. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this safety, this chain guard off, I'm gonna loosen right here. Don, you wanna come around and show him this. I'm gonna loosen this chain tensioner right here. All I gotta do is there's one bolt right in here. Just loosen that up and you can move this out of the way and it'll cause this chain just completely loosen, be loose on the thing. That way I can come up top here to this. This is my bearing. There's two bolts here. There's one here and one on the back side of this chain guard. I'm gonna loosen those up real quick. Then, once all that is loose, this will allow me to adjust this whole shaft in hopes of getting this to track, uh, track right. That being said, once I've loosened everything that we've talked about, this, uh, this bolt right back here on the back side right machine, if you wanna come show them that too. This bolt right here, this is what we're going to adjust in order to tension this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two, I believe they're uh, 9 sixteenths, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to take one, I'm going to grab this jam nut here, hold it in place, then I'm going to simply twist this one. Um, let me think. I've got a counter clock. All right, John, so we're going to adjust this bolt right here in order to uh, um, help track these split belts. What I'm going to do is take two wrenches, I'm going to grab the outside and hold it and then I will turn this one clockwise and what that will do is it will pull this entire bolt out and in return pull this shaft back which in, in theory will put tension on both of these and cause this belt to walk back the opposite direction. Now if I have it backwards according to the video I'm almost positive that it's this side. If it is the uh, left belt we're looking at the front of the machine and it's the right side I apologize then we're going to do it on the other side of the machine but I'm pretty positive it is this, uh, the, left, the left belt that we need tracking, therefore we're gonna move this bolt. Um, what that'll do is, like I said, it'll walk that belt back over and we should get it as close to center as possible. Uh, I know you're not gonna get it perfect by any means. We don't build them with robots, we build them with these two hands and we can only do the best we can do. Uh, that being said, let's start there. Let's see if we can get that sucker walking. Now, <clears throat> you might run into an issue with walking this one as well. If so, we'll have to address that as well. I'm just, like I said, I'm hoping all this is all this is is just the loose uh, uh, loose tension. Now there it could be other things. It may, might be the neural that's just not you know, not good and it's not turning it. That could be you know something new. We could send you a new roller really easily. Put that on just like that and fix it hopefully. But I believe this is the problem and I'm hoping this will be the solution. Is what I'm getting. At. Uh, after we get tr this belt tracking right, we'll move on to your other your other issues that we discussed or you told me you had. Uh, one being the pinch point, the other being that your shirts are kind of going in at an angle, therefore you're having to adjust it on the NV table to comp, uh, to comp, uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? Basically make it work. Uh, we'll get there. Uh, but we want to start here. This is the first thing I want you to do. After you've tried this, give me a shout. Tell me yay or nay. We've, we've done good or we've made it worse. If we've made it worse, then we'll We'll keep going, we're gonna make it right, I promise you that. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna leave this alone for now. I'm hoping that is the problem. If not, like I said, we'll go into further detail on how to fix that. Let's move on to your other problems. Hey John, real quick, before we move on, uh, I wanted to go ahead and give you a word of advice. Do not, when you're adjusting this, do not make giant changes. Don't go and turn this thing twice. Make a little quarter turn on this bolt and that'll, it, uh, a quarter turn will go a long way when it comes to tracking belts. So what I want you to do is make that slight adjustment, let's tighten these back up and let it run. It's gonna take some time to adjust and, and you'll start seeing it walk. And once it stops and you don't see it walking any further, okay, now we go back, let's loosen these two again, make another minor adjustment. I mean, just tiny, tiny little turns at a time, maybe even an eighth of a turn, you know, something tiny. Uh, and then once again, we'll tighten this up, watch it, watch it do its thing. That being said, I wanted to give you a, a good word of advice. 
Little goes a long way when it comes to tracking belts. All right, John, we're gonna move on to uh, the other two problems you were saying you were having, one being the pinch point. I wanna to touch on that first. Uh, before we go adjusting anything, the first thing I want you to do is plug air to the machine. Let's get rid of, let's basically uh, um, pull all my e-stop buttons out. And I want that air on the machine. I want everything to be ready to push the start button. At that point, don't start the machine. I want to go back to the back where the main air regulator is, which is on my side of the machine. Uh, I want to double check and make sure the air pressure going to the main air regulator is at least 80 PSI, at least. Got to make sure we have that much for this whole machine to function right. And better than that, I would say run this sucker, since you've got the 4200 on here, I'd say run it at around 90, even 100 PSI is not going to hurt a thing. That way we guarantee we get enough air pressure to make this entire machine work and function correctly. Alright, once we've gone back, we have verified that you have at least 80 PSI. I'm going to tell you between 90 and 100 is the golden number. Uh, once we verify that we've got that, alright, now I can go and push my e-stop button which cuts all the power and all the air off of this machine and we're gonna start adjusting this gap. So first things first, I'm gonna to come to my in feed table. I'm gonna place a level. I'm gonna go length and width wise and I wanna level this table the best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect to the T, it just needs to be relatively close. Keep the bubble inside the lines is all we're looking for. It doesn't have to be dead center, just inside the lines. Once I know that my table is level we leave this alone this is my starting point this is god as we like to call it we work the entire machine around this right here because if this is not level i can't adjust and i can't make the proper adjustments to make my machine work in unison with this this is the most important right here all right once we've done that what i want to do is take my table and you can see physically i don't have any air on the machine so i can move this table inside and out so what i'm going to do is push it all the way in I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna step on this side, and I'm gonna look at my gap. And what I'm talking about is my gap, if you can show this, the gap between the stainless steel table and both of these rollers. You can see there's not much, there's not much room. I don't want these belts to touch my stainless steel table. I don't, because then I'm gonna ruin these belts quicker than, they, than they're going to be. I'll sit there and chew these things up faster than I need. But I want them to come as close as possible, therefore when this table comes in, that shirt gets grabbed by these two and it starts working its way in the machine. Now that, after that, I've got this thing level. I can't have, you know, a slight gap over here and a big gap over here. I want this parallel to this table. Now I know that this roller and these, or these rollers and this shaft is parallel to my table working in unison. After we've done that, now I will come to my, my green PTC belts, the in-feed pinch point. Obviously, I know you're having trouble getting the gap to close. Now, that could be one of two things. Well, it could be a couple different things. Uh, it could be the lack of this, this top shaft being set up properly. It could be, excuse me, it could be the lack of air pressure due to me not checking my main air regulator. Maybe I don't have enough air pressure to make this thing come up enough, maybe. Uh, what I believe it to be is probably your, your little adjustment piece back here. And uh, if Don will come on the other side here, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. If you want to come around here and show him this, this nut right here. On the other side of me. All right, I want you to get a close up of this right here. All right, John, I hope you can see this. You got a good picture? All right, so this, this little thing right here is what keeps my pivot point. So in theory, what I'm doing with this in-feed pinch point is closing the gap from here to here, right, my shaft. And that sucker is gonna stop it from getting any further up. So I might have to drop this bolt, might have to loosen my jam nut, pull this down a little bit to allow that gap to close. That's the first thing I want you to see, I want you to check, make sure that we don't have this set too high or it didn't get adjusted somehow. After that, if it still doesn't work, we'll go to step two, but I want you to try this first and see if that, if that fixes it. If not, give me a shout. I'll give you more, uh, uh, more things to try. Um, that being said, let's move on to, what was the other problem? Oh, your shirts. Shirts being pulled in or out. 
Now, hopefully, if you do what I just told you to do and we, we level the table, we've leveled our shaft and rollers according to my table, I'm hoping that will fix everything because normally when a shirt gets pulled in one side or the other, that means this shaft is sitting at an angle, therefore my green belts are going to pull that shirt in before the right side, so therefore it's going to turn it. It'll come in and yank it this way. So that being said, I'm hoping once we've leveled everything out, this should be, a, a, this should be the fix to all your problems. Um, like I said, if not, give me a shout back. We'll keep going and I'll give you any and every detail about this machine that I can and we'll, I promise you we'll get you up and running. Uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback and uh, hopefully uh, this will help you out. Thank you so much.